All right. Looks like we're live. We are. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another installment of Juju Office Hours for April 21st, 2016. It's uh, Ubuntu 16.04 day, so we figured we would have uh, office hours today uh, to talk about all the new upgrades that are coming, uh, what Juju 2.0 version is coming in Xenial, so we're going to do a quick uh, status update. And then we've got some big data updates today. Uh, Marco is going to be talking about some perf kit updates, and I'm going to, on behalf of the OpenStack guys, kind of run through their release notes. And then we have Matt Bruzek here, Ubuntu Charmer at large, just hanging out. So welcome, everybody. It's 2.0, and I guess, Cheryl, um, you're going to go first. What, what, what version of Juju are we getting with 16.04 here? And, uh, like, if you could cover uh what the plans are post release i know that it's only a beta in 2.0 and we'll be getting the final 2.0 as an update right so i believe what's going in Xenial is our beta 4 that we released last week we do have a beta 5 that came out yesterday that has a couple fixes um that i know that were um really big for people, uh, namely uh, deploying local charms was sometimes resulting in a bad request error. Uh, so that's been fixed in beta 5, which is awesome. Uh, there were also some problems with some updates from LexD that were also fixed in beta 5. And just so everybody knows, if you're using the LexD provider, you you will need, on a fresh install, you will need to do the dpackage reconfigure for LexD to actually go in there and set up all the bridge in, uh, networking and get that started, or else you'll get some awesome error messages because we don't have any networking there. Um, let's see, what other bugs? There's, there's been a few other bugs hey, that were fixed. You. Hi, Hi Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there, there were a lot of bug fixes that uh, went into, into Beta 5, and we also um, had a huge help from the docs team to go in and rewrite the help text for a lot of our commands. So you'll see that um, we have started to implement those, and uh, a lot of those have been updated, which is awesome. One of the other things to be aware of is that as... Um, you all know today is release day. Uh, Juju, by default, will try and bootstrap um, a Xenial node unless you override it with um, a, either the bootstrap series or the default series to specify something other than Xenial. So you might run into that. Uh, I saw a bug come in today that somebody didn't have any Xenial images in their OpenStack cloud and then couldn't bootstrap. So that's um, that's why there. Yeah. Um, now, can we, can we discuss this here for a little bit here? Um, so something that you will know, in most of our documentation, we just kind of tell you, Juju deploy blah, Juju deploy this. But in real production um, environments and stuff, uh, we almost always recommend to be explicit about yeah. the version that you deploy, right? Um, so you just tested this today. So if today, so we only have 26 charms right now that are Xenial. So if you install M NTP, you're good to go. Uh, but if you grab something else, like say MediaWiki or something, uh, the bootstrap, the Xenio bootstrap node will fall back and deploy MediaWiki on Trusty, which is tested, right? It won't yeah. try to force MediaWiki onto a Xenio OS. Right. right, right. And so yeah, I, I did test it, and so I had a new bootstrap. I didn't specify any sort of config for any of the default series, and it did, mm -hmm. when I just said deploy MediaWiki, it picked Trusty to deploy right there. Right. And then... Uh, some other comments for the listening audience. What will happen is, is Charm authors over the next few months will start pushing things into the Xenial space in the Charm store. Uh, the first big ones you'll see uh, today actually are the OpenStack Charms. Uh, that's why they couldn't join us. They're still in the middle of CIing a bunch of stuff. So those, those will lead the way. And as always, the NTP Charm is all set to go for the latest LTS. Um, so we definitely encourage authors, now that Xenial's out, now that you, when you type a bootstrap, you get Xenial, you get the new OS, um, feel free to go ahead and start testing on Xenial um, and then uh, putting things in the new review queue, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So, sorry, I just wanted to say that bit about Xenial there, what, what, what changes no there, because I was definitely confused this morning. Okay. I was I was too. So uh, yeah. and, and to be fair, a lot of other people were as well. So mm. <laughs> that's why we uh, have so, these meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a couple other things you had asked about going forward. Um, we are looking for our next release to be an RC, and uh, there are a couple changes that we are looking to get completed before we do that. The first is. Um, 
being more explicit in requesting a container type, now you can say deploy to you know dash dash to LXC colon machine number. And since we are going to be transitioning to using LexD for all of that, we're going to be changing that terminology to be dash dash to LexD. So the containers that you'll be getting will be getting um, will be managed through LexD. Uh, we are still going through the ropes to make sure all that is working and it has feature parity with using the LXC container type. Um, so that's one of the things we're waiting on before we do an RC. And another thing that everyone is eagerly awaiting is the MAS2 support. So that is going along really well. We had a dynamite group of people um, busting their butts to get that done. And they're getting very close. So most likely, we will be including that under a feature flag for RC because, again, it's brand spanking new. We want to make sure people really know that you know, this is kind of experimental. We want to make sure it gets a lot of use before we can um, release it um, without the feature flag there. So we were originally looking at next week to do evaluate if we were ready to do an RC or not. OK. And then I have a question. So we obviously work out Juju every day. So having the PPA there is kind of like a given for us. Um, so I'm assuming is beta 5 in the PPA now? I haven't I haven't quite looked today. And then if you can kind of fill us in on, like, do you guys expect to upload to the PPA immediately and then there's a backporting process? Like, basically, if I, if I just stick with Xenial, how far behind am I going to be? Is it going to be a few weeks? Like, do we have an aggressive plan or...? No, we, we will push things into Xenial um, as soon as we get them released. So it hopefully the delay won't be too 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 great there. We've been working very closely with the foundation team to make sure all of our packaging is um, up to snuff, <laughs> make sure that we have their approval for everything. Uh, so w hopefully there wouldn't won't be too much of a delay um, mm. in getting what we have released out into into Xenial. Awesome. Yeah, I look forward to not having to use the PPA unless I like want to. You know. It's going to be a good yeah. good day. So, all right. With that, does anybody have any questions for Cheryl? Let me look in, in the Juju channel here real quick. And, and Beta 5 is in the PPA. I can see it now. I have a question for Cheryl. Sure. So, Cheryl, uh, my name is Gilbert. I'm a civilian, so to speak. Uh, but... Um, I was a few minutes late. Could you just introduce yourself again so I understand who you are? And oh, sure. Yeah, I don't think I actually said anything about myself today. Um, I am on the Juju core team. And I am the release manager. So that means I manage lots and lots of bugs and try and keep sense of when we should actually get something out the door. So most likely, if you've, if you've opened up a bug in the past year, you've seen my name on it in some, some way or fashion. Gotcha. Thank you. Cool. And with that, Mark also has some associated tools that really, obviously, Juju itself is not Juju core, right? It's like the charms. We have charm tools. We have a bunch of ecosystem teams, uh, tools that we build around that. So Marco Cepi is going to go next. You can hang out if you want, Cheryl, or go, go back to trying to release 2.0. Um, <laughs> we're trying to be as flexible to get people in and out as, as possible. So uh, thanks for the update, Cheryl. Uh, thanks for all the hard work. I know it's been, you and your team have been, Really, really working hard. Yeah, yeah. There's so. a lot of awesome stuff in Dino. Yeah, so it will be a good party as soon as we're done. So th thanks for that. All right, with, with that, Marco, we have Charm and Charm Tools releases. Yeah, I just want to touch briefly just to uh, echo the announcement to the mailing list last that went out last week that Charm and Charm Tools have gone stable. Um, these are our quote-unquote 2.0 releases, although both of them are in the 2.1 range now. Uh, there were some last-minute feature ads and, and iterations that went into the last couple of weeks. Um, so just so everyone knows, this is a totally new charm command. It's pretty similar to the charm command that a lot of people have used in the past, uh, but there are some differences. I just want to highlight them again here. Um, so if you've never used the charm command, just sudo apt uh, install charm, and you'll get everything you need to get going. Uh, this is good for if you're managing charms, developing charms, authoring charms, etc. Um, it is essentially what the charm tools were in the past. Charm build, create, uh, adding additional things, doing proofs, um, but there are a large set of additional stuff that allows you to now publish and push charms directly to the charm store instead of having to use Launchpad and then follow an ingestion process. So this really expedites the, the, the time it takes to go from I wrote a charm to having it in the store uh, and also, the 
Juju UI engineering team have been working really hard to add a bunch of features that developers have been asking for. Um, mainly now, instead of having to create two separate usernames or groups to manage a development version and a stable version of the charms, there is now development and stable channels on a single charm. So you can push a charm to the store uh, and then publish revisions into either the development stream or the stable stream of that so people can subscribe to what version of the charm they want to get. Uh, we also have added the ability to assign um, access control to charms so you can grant access, both read and write, to either the public space or select group of users or just yourself. Uh, so we give you the control to really manage your charms in the charm store. And again, the UI engineering team has done a lot of work to get that in. Uh, so a lot of these new commands, things like charm login, charm push and pull, uh, charm publish, uh, set, um, etc., uh, are there to help you kind of manage those charm entities in the store uh, instead of going through this kind of side process. In addition to this, this means that now there is really no limit on what VCS or how you manage your development cycle for charms. Uh, they're not tied to a single workflow in Launchpad and Bazaar. Uh, you could use Git and GitHub or GitBucket, or you could use VC, um, Subversion or any kind of whatever makes sense for you and your team for managing these charms, and wherever you want to host those upstreams. Um, so there's an entire release email about this, as well as... Uh, as well as updated documentation in the store for about how to push and publish to the Charm store. Uh, so I encourage everyone who's been using and managing Charms to go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, make sure you update to the latest versions. You should be having something of the ballpark of 2.1 for both Charm and Charm tools. Uh, this is available in Xenial. Uh, it's available in the stable PPA for those running Trusty and Wiley. And it's also available in Homebrew for those using OSX. So if you just brew install Charm, you'll get all the components you need. Uh, or if you upgrade a previous Charm tools install, you'll get the latest Charm tools and the new Charm command that goes with it. Yeah, I really enjoy the new publishing workflow is, is much nicer than it used to be. Yeah, it really makes things really quick to iterate, and it's... It takes the guesswork out of when stuff will land in the store. It's when you told it to land in the store, and that's when it shows up. It's really nice. Awesome. And with that, we have our first user question from the audience. Um, one second. Um, so Aurora even asks, hey, I'm not a coder, but how do I get Media Goblin Charm going for Juju? And then... Uh, here she says, so basically media gobbling and ghost is all I'm looking for in charms. So I think we have ghost, um, don't we? Is, is yeah, we do. Charm we with... have a ghost charm somewhere in the store. Um, yeah, we if, do. It, yep. if someone you... can find find that and put that one in IRC. I'll so I had, a look at, I had a look at media goblin. It just looks like Python. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's like on a framework or anything. Um, I'm having a hard time navigating Savannah. It's a good new thing. Um, so for that, I am not sure that we have a media goblin charm. No, but... Um, and if well, we did, it would be one of the older ones. Yeah. Uh, it is pretty easy. If you can follow their online instructions, taking that and converting it to a charm is actually pretty straightforward, at least for the first pass of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are interested in trying, I'm just going to pop down into a directory, a set of directories here. Uh, yeah, we... Run charm create media goblin. And that'll give you kind of the, uh, the 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 boilerplate and templates to get started building a charm, uh, as well as some little bit of guides to, to walk through uh, what it means to kind of start poking these things. So this is a Python example. I think Media Goblin's also Python. You don't have to write in Python. You can write this in Bash or, or another language as well. Um, but that might be it. I found that that's a great way to get started if you're not a developer but you're still looking to deploy some stuff. If you're familiar with running it or running that software anywhere, um, you have the knowledge to start writing a charm essentially because the idea behind charms is just that kind of condensing that, that distillation of all the operational knowledge, not the development knowledge of how to build this, the, the application, but what it takes to run that application. Thing out for anybody else or is it my network? Nope, he sounds good to me. 
And then we have... Okay, so hopefully that'll get you started. Ghosts appears to be precise only. Um, Hatch is an IRC. He wrote that. Um, just asked him if he should update to Xenial. Maybe there's a new version of Ghosts he could update. Um, next question from James Beatty, who's also hanging out here. Um, up, James? Hey, what's going on, guys? Not much. Uh, good to see you. I'm really excited about the release of uh, all the 2.0 stuff and the release of Xenial. So, uh, yeah, I've got our Dark Horse CIO with me here in the room, and uh, he's just sitting in on uh, kind of uh, getting a glance at the new feature sets. Oh, awesome. Tell him we say hello. He says hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So at the end, I'm going to cover the OpenStack releases of the charms for Mataka. Unfortunately, uh, the OpenStack guys aren't here because they're actually busy publishing those today. Um, but I have draft release notes that you can go ahead and consume and whatnot. I'll put those on the sidebar while we answer your question, actually. So you had a question about publishing. Um, yeah, so basically just how, how can I develop uh, la charms under my own personal namespace but then also make them publicly available without using the legacy charm store? Yeah, so I could just show real quickly, it just takes a couple of steps, uh, how that would look. So I'm going to pop in over to my uh, trusty directory. I should have a couple charms in here. I think I wrote the shout IRC charm. Uh, yeah, I did, or I started writing it at least. Um, so I'm going to publish this to my personal namespace. It is not done by any means, so... It's now ready for public consumption, but I can at least start sharing it with people like you who are interested. So the first thing I do is I just push the charm to the store. So charm push this directory, the shout IRC, to shout IRC. Uh, so what this does is this basically takes the entire directory, zips it up more or less, and uploads it to the store under my personal namespace. Um, so, oops, i got to tell it what series. This is definitely going to be... Actually, you know what? This is a Xenial charm, for sure. Um, so before I did this, I actually logged into the store from the command line. Uh, I should have shown that. but um, So the charm command knows who I am in the store. Um, so it says here that I've got a new revision, revision zero of the charm under my namespace. It's in the unpublished channel. This is that one of three channels that exist. There's unpublished revisions, development, and stable. So I'm going to go ahead and charm publish this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the stable channel so people can see it at least. We're going to publish this, uh, this revision of the charm into the stable channel. Uh, I could have also said instead of stable channel, put it in the development channel. Um, I'm also going to tell people where to find this stuff, so I'm going to set the... Uh, home page is going to be uh, slash me slash, I think it's layer shout IRC. But this is where people can go and learn more about the project and the bugs URL where they know how to report bugs. And this is my actual layer source repository. It's not necessarily, uh, this could be your upstreams uh, information. This could be, oops, layer. Yeah, and on the Charm web page, that will actually auto-link to those, so, like, it'll look end-user decent for people. Yep. So I'm just going to... Oops, that's going to fail, because I let that happen there. I should have set it so the Shout IRC Charm in my namespace for Xenial. Um, oh, I had a little backwards. Of course, you have to set the entity you want, and you have to give it a home page and bugs. So I set those so people know how to find the homepage and the bugs there. And then the last thing I want to do uh, is I need to grant people access to it. So by default, only I can read and write that charm. Uh, so I'm going to say charm set. Uh, sorry. Charm grant for my shout IRC in the stable channel. I'm going to grant it for everyone. Yeah, until you do everyone, no one except you will be able to see the charm when you're logged into the store. So be cognizant of that. I published, and then I couldn't find it in the store, and then I realized I wasn't logged in in my browser, so it was hidden to me. And once I logged in, I saw all my stuff. All right, so if I so. show, if I do a charm show now, it shows me all the information about this single charm. Um, perm? Perm. There we go. The permissions for it is everyone and me has read access, and only I can write to it. Um, so there's... 
this show command when you don't put filters is quite a long output. It shows you the channels it's in, the revisions, download information, the series that are supported for it. Uh, so it's in the stable channel. Um, if I also publish this, the development channel will be there. All the files and their relative sizes. Uh, but that's it. If you go to the Charm Store right now, um, jujucharms.com. Actually, let me just share my browser. Slash u slash Marco Cheppi. Uh, share this. So if you go to my user page, um, besides all of the bundles and charms and stuff that I have here, we should have a Shout IRC charm. Revision Zero that I just uploaded. If you click through to it, uh, you'll see here on the right the home page and submit a bug links are are set to what I set them to. Um, the the README is the boilerplate README. This is still very much a raw charm, but it's published in the stable channel. People can start deploying it now. That's all it takes to get into the charm store is essentially those two to three commands. Um, you push it up, pushing it puts it in the un un um, sorry, what's the name of that channel the un I keep calling it the unchannel, but it's not the unchannel. It's the unpublished channel. Excuse me. So it's just a stream of revisions from zero to n in this unpublished channel, and then you say, "I want these revisions to be in these two development or stable channels," and those act like pointers, basically. Uh, so we just point to revisions in that stream. Um, there's a doc on the in the Juju Charms on the development section. If you go to the Juju Charm Store, that explains this probably much better than I have, um, but that's the idea behind getting into the store. It's very frictionless. Um, at any time, I can revoke access to this charm. I can iterate on the charm and upload a new version, put that version in the development channel instead, uh, and then when that's ready, I can publish new revisions or put that version in the stable channel. That, that whole process is managed by me when I'm ready to make that change. Um, so that's, that's one of the, the nice new things that the UI engineering team have done uh, to make that that experience for developers much easier. Yeah, and, and Matt brings up a good point. Uh, it's important to remember that uh, when you publish, you're grabbing a blob and you're shoving it to the store. There's no VCS information associated in that. So when you see the revision zero and whatnot, those aren't tied to what version control you have on disk. Right, and this is especially important with layers because the layer that you use to build this charm is the thing you really care about the built artifact is just a response of all of the combination of all the layers merged and compiled together. So typically people won't put the compiled charm in VCS. They'll just simply upload it and then that becomes essentially this pseudo really lightweight version managed system in the store. But you still iterate and manage your layer like you would with a normal development process. All right. I hope that answers your question, James. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much for that explanation. That was really thorough and, and uh, dead on. Yeah, and and you have a devil channel as well, not just a stable channel. You can... Totally, totally. Awesome. Thank you for that. All right, and with that, let's see who's who's up next. All right, unless we have any more questions, this time I get the big data update from Corey. Um, hello. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of work on the big data team. We actually just finished a um, week-long sprint uh, with the um, project uh, lead of the Apache Big Top project, uh, in which we created um, initial the initial pass at uh, Charms for the Big da uh, Big Top Apache Big Top project to deploy uh, their Big Top solution or their big data solutions, uh, as well as the um, Apache. Big, uh, big data solutions that we have. Let me share my screen and show you. Um, this is still a work in progress, um, but we've got it um, up and deploying uh, the name node resource manager and uh, slaves from Big Top, as you can see up here at the top. Uh, I know this is probably kind of small on the uh, on the screen share, but there's a lot of information here. Um, so the really nice thing about this is uh, we, we built this from the ground up using layers. Um, so we've got a big top base layer that's going to make it really easy to deploy uh, not just the uh, Hadoop components that you see here, but as we, uh, we've also you, um, continued this with the model that we started with the uh, Apache, the bare bones Apache um, 
Hadoop uh, big data charms, sorry, that um, where we have a base layer and a, a plugin, uh, so you can it'll be really easy not only to deploy uh, all of the big top uh, big data components, which there are a lot, but also to continue to connect in with them with third party um, charms and. You can, when you create your third-party charm to leverage the plugin uh, architecture that we have designed, your charm will be able to work with either the big top big data uh, components, uh, or you can connect it up to the bare bones Apache components. And we we'd like to continue this that trend and add other vendors. So you can, uh, you, with if the charms continue to follow the same uh, pattern, then all you have to do is write to this one plugin uh, style interface and you can swap out uh, or work with whatever um, core big data um, inf uh, vendor uh, you, your uh, users want to deploy it with. So whether that be you know, bare bones Apache uh, that we, we are maintaining, uh, these big top charms uh, that we have started and are working to get in upstream uh, with the big top project, or uh, down the road you know, some other vendors like uh, Cloudera or um, whatever else we might end up uh, integrating with. Um, we also, uh, that doesn't mean then we started on this big top, big top project. We, did, we haven't stopped working on the uh, core Apache um, charms. We've also developed, uh, worked on developing the HA deployments and other, you know, production ready uh, aspects of the big data charm ecosystem that we have developed. So um, this is uh, an example of uh, a more production-ready bundle. It's got uh, HA um, name nodes here um, with the automatic failover uh, when one uh, fails. Um, we're working on HA for the resource manager as well. Um, it also has uh, monitoring using Ganglia uh, on all of the units, including Spark and um, the name node and the, the slaves. We also have um, logging um, using the RSYS log forwarder. Um, this logging is, uh, we collect all of the logs from Spark, uh, Hadoop, and the other big data components and forward them along with our syslog forwarder. And in this particular bundle, those logs are actually forwarded back into HDFS where they can be analyzed uh, using uh, the Spark and uh, the other big data tools. Um, but you could also obviously have other logs from other services coming in to this and also the logs from your big data components going out into uh, something like uh, you know Elasticsearch, um, so that you can anal analyze in there. So it gives you a lot of uh, introspectability um, and a lot of power to analyze uh, logs using your big data stack um, that is uh, resilient to uh, failure. So that's mainly what we've been working on recently. Awesome. Awesome. Do we have we any have questions for Let me, Let me just give it a just second. A second. Oh, I, I completely forgot a big uh, part that I wanted to go over. Um, when I was talking about the Big Top charms, um, the Big Top uh, platform uh, installation platform is is based on Puppet scripts. So. Uh, we had need for a masterless puppet uh, layer. Uh, so we worked on that on the sprint and then uh, found out as we were just uh, just working on that that James here had actually created uh, a masterful puppet uh, layer. So we now have uh, two two puppet layers that obviously are gonna, we're going to work to combine, um, but it supports, uh, it, it, you can use a masterless puppet layer that uh, we worked on during the sprint or the if you have a puppet master uh, node, you can use the uh, awesome uh, puppet layer that uh, James created. Yeah, one thing I'd like to see is for you guys, I know I know they're not close to ready, but if you guys could announce that to the Juju list, I know we've had a lot of people asking for um, puppet layer int and integrations and all that stuff. And Marco would like to point out that you were one beta release behind. So... Yeah, fair enough. I'm I'm using the uh, charm the charm box devil, so that's supposed to. I, I updated it today. I'm not sure why I didn't. Pick uh, it. Right, actually, two two betas behind now. That's um okay. And with that, that's a big data update. Marco, I believe we go back to you. Let's talk perf kit. Well, we had some questions in the RC channel. Oh, we do. Hold on, let me look. 
Um, oh, follow-up questions about running uh, Juju on one server. And then is it possible to run Bootstrap on the node where Juju Core is configured? Okay, let's start with the first one. Uh, single server deployment here. So usually, I mean, just deploying dash dash two always machine well, zero in a LexD container should mostly work, right? Yeah, I mean, it's even easier. You have one machine, install uh -huh. Juju and LexD on it, and you've got a cloud. Right, right. <laughs> but you'd have to SSH to it. Well, unless that the one was your would would laptop or your desktop or... Right. I, had right. To, I haven't checked, and unfortunately Cheryl dropped out, but you should be able to Juju bootstrap LexD forward slash the IP address of the LexD host. Mm -hmm. And so you wouldn't even need to SSH into it. You'd just simply do something... I wish I had a... I don't have a second LexD server set up anywhere in here, so I can't test. But yeah, but it's... I mean, it's not a bad thing, right? If you have a digital ocean droplet or whatever... Right, just run the controller on there along with everything else. No harm, no foul, right? Uh, yeah, you could any. I would recommend using Xenio for it, but any machine mm -hmm. that can install LexD and Juju on it, you essentially have a one host contained uh, server, a Juju server. Right. I I think what we should certainly do in the future is, you know, as the features get flexed out, I am definitely interested in being able to have other servers that have LexD installed because, you know, LexD has network functionality and being able to utilize it that way for things like, you know, one or two machines, maybe like a home setup where you don't have a whole open stack or a quote-unquote real cloud. And I don't want to set up MAS either, right? But I, I can use LexD. So um, I'm going to go ahead and write that down as a possible topic. I guess we'll call it uh, dense cheap, dense juju clouds, I guess, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's definitely an option. I know that uh, on my laptop, especially with LexD, is really lightweight, so putting a putting a bunch of containers on one machine is, is really not an issue. Um, so, with that, the next question, is it possible to run Bootstrap on the node where juju core is configured? Uh, so, you, you can. Um, this would be one of two things, either, again, the LexD provider, mm -hmm. uh, where you would just be spinning up machines there. But if you wanted to use Juju Core, the machine it's installed in, as a bootstrap node for a larger cloud, you could bootstrap it as the manual provider, though that's not typically a recommended way to manage your machine. Uh, it's much better to use Juju Core as a client from your machine that will then reach out over the network to bootstrap that machine you intend to install Juju Core on. Mm -hmm. um, Juju Core works much better when it's installed in your machine as a client operating against a remote set of machines. Um, whether that remote machine is LexD, since those are all just machines, or a separate bootstrap or cloud or bare metal, etc. Right. And then what? Uh, just explain real quick how we do that for Teams with our little jump host there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah. I know a couple of us on the Ecosystems team have set up basically DigitalOcean droplets because they're so cheap to run. Um, where we install Juju the client tools, and that way we all have ways to access it. This was the only way that we could share environments sanely in 1.25. But with 1.2.0, with excuse me, um, we could use things like user management stuff where we can share credentials to a single controller, so that model really isn't needed anymore. Um, but shared jump hosts was a way that we did that. But again, that was client reaching out to either a cloud or a bare metal or another network. Yeah, and you and I actually haven't used a sh uh, shared credentials yet on a controller yet, but uh, when we prep for our next talk, I think we should show that. Because it'll all be SSH keys and everything, right? I'll just have access, right? Uh, yeah, no, that's that's the idea. Is I give you right. a file, you import into your controller, and then you have credentials now to that controller or to a set of models in a controller. Right, right. So there, there are access controls for charms in the store, but also access control for in users inside of a controller slash model environment, deployed environment. Right. So I'm really looking forward to actually learning how that works because I haven't had a chance to use that yet uh, at home. I've been all LexD and ZFS all the time. All right. Uh, any more questions in the audience? Keep them coming. Uh, if not, Marco will will start talking about. Why don't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Gil. Go ahead. 
Yeah, no, I, I have a bunch of questions, so uh, just let me know when you want to address those. Sure, sure. I mean, we, we put updates on the agenda just, you know, so we have something to talk about, but if, you know, if you've got questions, live well, audience yeah. is always better. Questions, and then uh, I thought I'd do some show and tell um, just quickly. I haven't, maybe, maybe I'll start with that. Uh, I haven't done the screen share. Let me try to do this. Uh, let's see. All right. Start screen share. Um, so, can you see that okay? Yep. All right, so uh, I will just show this quick. Oh, let's see. Uh, I need to be out of here. My, uh, this is my, um, this last thing is what I'm, um, so this is one of my Moss managed uh, Dell blades, and you can see uh, I just PS these processes. I've got a whole bunch of Oracle products running. I've got, uh, and, and by the way, is my sound okay? I've got four blades running with eight fans. Is it, does it come through okay? You sound great. Okay. Um, so this, this top one uh, here, this is Oracle XE. This is, their, this is the software that Oracle gives away, although you have to click some export restrictions. Then uh, here is a 12C instance that's actually running Oracle ASM, which is Oracle's uh, logical volume manager that they uh, provide. Um, it's actually a non-licensed product now, but basically it's proprietary software. And then, you know, there's a 11G database, and then this database, I believe, is running on top of the ASM. So I just wanted to show that. Um, I've been deploying a lot of Oracle products to the plates uh, with a lot of success. Um, I One of my, you know, dream, dream goals is to... Uh, charm all this stuff up and make it uh, deployable. And that brings me to one of my questions, which is, uh, to do that, um, I, I need this feature in the charms uh, where you can, sort of a pop-up comes up or something, where you can, you know, accept some export restrictions and then download the software. I don't know. Uh, Matt and I had kind of touched on this briefly. Um, so, so yeah. that's just kind so Gil, of... Gil, yeah. In Juju 2.0, we have something uh, coming out called uh, Terms. Uh, it's our Terms feature, and you won't be able to deploy the charm without accepting the Terms uh, feature first. But you have to you have to upload the Terms to the Juju um, the, the Juju server first, and then then you won't be able to deploy it until you accept Terms. So there is something um, along those lines, and then we'll be able to show um, the wall of text. Uh, for for the license and everything like that. Okay, so that would be uh, that would be one way to go. Um, yep. Yeah. So and how does that look like? Is it like a is it like a debconf style? So it's hard to it's hard to describe. Basically, in the charm, it would define a set of terms like this, where I have a set of terms called Marco product for this charm. Um, when you go to deploy that charm, if you do you deploy the charm? Juju will air out saying you have not yet accepted the terms for this charm or terms if it's multiple terms. You then have to do Juju agree to the set of terms, and in doing so, it pops up with the full text in a basically a page or output. At the very bottom, you just say yes, and you agree to that revision of those terms. Um, and terms are kind of in a global scope. So, for instance, if there's kind of one comical, one common Oracle license for all of the products you're charming up, you just need to create a term for that license, and then you can apply any charm that needs to have that term agreed to. You can declare that I need to agree to this Oracle slash Oracle product slash zero revision of the of the of the terms. And then the user is then prompted and acknowledges that they are accepting that term. Once they accept it, they can deploy that charm or any charm that needs that term uh, without having to agree again. Would that work for a bundle if you had a set of Oracle products, let's say? Um, or is that per well, charm? Again, terms are down to the charm level. So if you had a bundle full of charms that all had the same set of terms, you'd have to first make sure you agreed to every term that's in there, and then you could deploy that bundle or any permutation of that bundle as many times as you want as long as you've already previously agreed to those terms at some point in time. Excellent. So that's cool. one way that we're 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 allowing model uh, uh, ISVs upstreams and such to model those is by having them put their terms essentially describing their terms so that users can agree them in a can 
agree to them in a way that uh, makes sense with the Juju workflow. So it sounds like there would, if I understand that right, there would need to be some coordination with Oracle Corp for that approach? Not necessarily. Um, we do review terms that are being uploaded since they are kind of legally binding items from users. Um, I'm not sure how it would work from your perspective as a community member or someone outside of Oracle that's charming Oracle software. I think you'd just simply be reproducing the license for that software as a term in the store. Um, it's something I'd be more than happy to talk with you offline and figure out what that looks like since we're still fleshing this feature out in Juju 2.0. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's absolutely a mechanism that we have available. I have to talk with our legal team to see how that would work from that perspective. But I imagine it's very much the same where you just simply are providing the terms as is unmodified from the upstream that they require that a user who's using the software being deployed by the charm agrees to that, that license. And that's how we explicitly make sure that users are first understand the licenses and the agreements they're getting into in deploying charms and then making sure that they agree to those terms before they deploy that software. Yep. And to be clear, what you just showed us was in Juju 2.0 today. It's not behind a feature flag or anything oh, yeah, like no, that, this right? Is in, this is okay. in the latest beta, beta 5. Um, the, this re requires a charm store component, and I'm not sure 100% where that lives, but you can agree to terms in Juju 2.0 that will be in a 2.0 when that releases. Um, but those terms need to be uploaded and available in the Charm Store before you can agree to them, and then the Charm Store tracks that you, the user, has agreed to them. Cool. Uh, so that, that's the point where I'm not 100% certain on, but that's that's where uh, that, that feature will be available in 2.0. Cool. Um, let's see, my next uh, question is probably, probably for Marco. Um, somewhere when I was working with Juju, I found uh, a post on the internet that explained how to push out the LXC template without actually deploying a charm, but I, I can't find that command, and I, I need that command. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. Um. So, so somebody had written, you know, it's just a one-line Juju command, but you can actually sort of, so you know, your, your Moss blade doesn't by default have any LXC on. I mean, it's got the Juju BR0, but it doesn't have... So suppose you want to put the Juju template, Juju trusty template out there, but you don't want to actually deploy a charm. There, somebody had that command somewhere, um, and now I can't find it. It's like I found a cure for cancer, and now I, I lost it, you know, type thing. So uh, I'm not sure. I'd be happy to poke around and see if I could figure out. This is for a 1.25 deployment of Juju, right? Probably. I, it was in some. It was actually in some official documentation somewhere. Um, you, one can of those probably, you can probably deploy the Ubuntu Charm, which is just bare Ubuntu. It doesn't have any software installed with it. So you can uh, do Juju deploy Ubuntu, and uh, that should give you uh, just an instance, no software installed, nothing else with it. Yeah, I, yeah, I know that is one approach. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, cool. Um, Let's see. Uh, uh, we did that. I asked that question. Um, so, as far as um, who is, are some I assume some people on the team are going to Austin next week. Uh, yeah, our almost our entire OpenStack charming team will be in Austin for the OpenStack Developer Summit next week. Um, I don't think anyone on this call in particular, at least from the canonical side, will be there, but. Um, Certainly, the there'll be there will be canonical people in spades in uh, in Austin next week. So, if you had to pick one day, you know, I mean, knowing what I'm interested in, um, one day to go, um, can you just off the top of your head say what you think would be the best single day to go? Absolutely. So there is a we have a track day in ODS, which is a single day that that we'll have a room where we'll be talking about. Our OpenStack, Juju, Autopilot, Maz, uh, the visions and stuff for the future, our OpenStack charms, our OpenStack packages, kind of everything that we produce for OpenStack. I don't know exactly when that day is. I will look it up and hopefully have an answer before the end of this call. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, because I, I mentioned the Maz, I've got a daytime job again, and uh, so I'm, I can probably budget one day, uh, but that'd probably be the most. Um, 
because they're really keeping me busy. Um, that's it, I think, for my questions this month. Oh, I did have I did have one thing I wanted to throw out. Um, so you know, I'm really not making a lot of progress with having time to devote to uh, to learning to write charms as much as I want to. I mean, that I'm working for a major bank and they've just got me swamped. Um, so if you know any, you know, uh, unemployed or partially employed charmers that would be interested in collaborating uh, for pay, because one good thing about working for a bank is I'm making money, so um, I could afford to collaborate somebody on a paid basis uh, to work on getting some of this Oracle stuff charmed, uh, which I would like to do. So if you know of anybody, um, you know, give them my info and tell them to contact me. Oh, I would also recommend uh, the Juju mailing list as well. Yes. To, to, to yes. Talk conversations about that. Um, a lot of our charmers community and otherwise hang out on that list, so it's at least a good place to crowdsource ideas, get answers, and find people who may be interested in helping. All right. So yeah. uh, right. So that's different from Freenode. That's the mailing list. Okay. Yeah, that's our mailing list. Yes. It's a uh, Juju at lists dot Ubuntu dot com. All right, I think I'm on that one, but I gotta double check. All right, yeah. juju.list.ubuntu.com. Yep, because that will be interesting there, because there could be many layers being reused, right? If you look at the typical Oracle stack. Oh yeah, I mean it's you know I think once a single charm is written, you know, for the 11G and up, a lot of it will become sort of boilerplate, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would definitely be interesting. I think a lot of people would appreciate seeing what that looks like. Um, well, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, it's kind of like Field of Dreams. You're building a baseball field out in a cornfield that nobody really cares about. But um, I, in my work, you know, I've found a lot of devs that are doing work for major corporations. and They need to prototype something on their laptop. And they don't really want to install VMware Player or VirtualBox, and they'd rather have a quick way to to, in like 10 minutes, just lay down a container and prototype it. So I mm -hmm. think there could be some, some value, you know, for devs that want to stay in a more pure Ubuntu environment, but they kind of, unfortunately, have to muck with Oracle a bit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think the features that Marco was alluding to earlier, like the permissions for teams and stuff, would be really useful for small teams, right? You have one box with a controller that has stuff on it, like you know your Oracle stack, let's say, and then like you got two or three guys sharing that environment, so they could do development. Absolutely. And then when one guy inevitably messes it up, you just over lunch you just fire it back up. No, yeah. No harm, no foul, you know. <laughs> and awesome. I, I do have one other little stump the stars uh, experts thing. This is just something that's kind of lurking out there, which is uh, every every Oracle uh, advanced product seems to run fine on Ubuntu in uh, Oracle Linux containers. So it's all running off Ubuntu uh, kernel, like Ubuntu 4, uh, Linux 4 kernel. Um, all, all good. But uh, one odd thing is that Oracle Rack, okay, it runs great on Ubuntu desktop, but it won't run on Ubuntu uh, OpenStack Blades. So um, that that's a little bit of a mystery. The CRS process won't start on the, uh, the server version, but it'll start on the desktop version. So... Uh, that one's been a real stumper, um, and maybe that Ubuntu lists. Uh, once I start working with some people, maybe uh, maybe that might eventually be solved. But it it's kind of mysterious. Yeah, I don't have anything to add on that. If if there is a problem, maybe you know filing a bug against is it is it the charm that doesn't run, or is it just o OpenStack in general? Yeah, so none of this stuff's been charmed yet. This is all just, what I do is um, I just put, so I, I'll just share my screen real quick again. Um, I won't take too long with this. But, um, so if I, uh, why is the command hanging? I don't know. It's, I guess it's because I'm trying to show it to somebody, so the, this is the one time it hangs. I don't know why. Uh... Tell you if this has never happened before. It's the old. Um, yeah. Here, I'll do it on a different one. 
Uh, let's see. Ubuntu. Uh, and for those of you listening now, it would be a good time to remind you what uh, he's alluding to is because he's using LexD, they have Oracle and CentOS and Debian and a whole bunch of images available uh, in LexD. So you could just, on any 1604 machine, you just slurp down these images as you need them, right? You don't even need to keep a copy. You could just say, oh, grab me the latest Oracle, grab me the latest CentOS Fedora. It'll figure it out. It'll cache it for you. It'll update it for you. Uh, for a period of 10 days, and then if you don't use it, it'll clean up after oh. itself. It's quite brilliant. Yeah, just these are just templates that are running on the MOS nodes, but I just brought them down using, you know, LXC Create. I mean, there's no there's no integration with Juju at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just, you know, going through the exercise of installing it and getting it running, um, which is sort of like the first step towards charming it, right? I mean, i got to understand what Absolutely. I have to do to, to install it, so... Uh, um, 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 FS, let's see, more, you can see, you know, this is Oracle Linux, I haven't got them running, so I'm just showing you from the, the OS, but these mm -hmm. are all Oracle Linux server 6.5 containers, um, that's about that, we'll, um, so, and now I will try to unshare this. Let's see, there we go. So um, that's about it for me. I think that's enough for one day. <laughs> Dude, that that is that is really awesome. Like I think, you know, don't be discouraged because you haven't really started charming yet. I mean, ninety percent of it is understanding what the service needs, and I think you'll save time overall, taking your time understanding the nuances of it, as opposed to just diving in and charm creating and then, you know. Um, painting yourself kind of in a corner, uh, but yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, absolutely nail the list because I'm, I am, I mean, you can't be the only person wanting this, you know, that kind of thing. So if we can help find you someone who can, um, you know, help accelerate the process of getting these charmed, that would well, I think that would be really useful. I went to scale for fourteen x this year and. Uh -huh. um, they gave me a, a brief speaking slot in one of those like two minute speeches and. I gave my standard, you know, spiel that uh, when I start talking about Oracle on Ubuntu, you know, the Ubuntu people go, huh, what? And, and when I go to Oracle conferences, the Oracle people go, huh, what? So, um, so I, I'm perfectly happy. I'm doing exactly what I love. I'm working in a space that nobody cares about and makes me different. And you know, I don't know. I guess I'm hooked on. But I love Ubuntu. The truth is, that's that's cool. I mean, I, I love Ubuntu, and I just don't see any reason why. People that want to run Ubuntu should have to resort to all these hypervisors and crap like that. When <laughs> Oracle will run perfectly fine on Ubuntu kernels, so uh, you know now that we have containers, there's nothing to really stop putting Oracle on Ubuntu natively. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. Just a couple things before we hit the top of the hour. Um, for those going to ODS, um, it's a full week of activities. It looks like we have a the canonical track day is on Monday. It will be in the Austin Convention Center on Level Four, Room MR12 AB, whatever that means. I'm sure it makes sense when you're actually there. Can you um, can you repeat that room? What was it? Level Four. Level Four. Um, Mike Romeo MR12 uh, Alpha slash Bravo. Now, all, that, all that information is going to be posted. I'm going to post a link right now on the IRC channel, and that's going to be posted on the video description uh, below. If you're watching this video later, uh, there's going to be all that information with all the track. Uh, I mean, all the sessions that you're going to have in there, uh, all the times, and all the details you may need. Okay, perfect. So, you, uh, so if I hear you right, Mark, on Monday is the day that would be the one day to attend. If you add only one day, I think Monday in that room would probably be your best bet for absorbing as much knowledge as you can around the Ubuntu OpenStack ecosystem. Okay, good. So I'll try to arrange to be there Monday. And you and some of the team are going to be there Monday? Uh, I, I won't. Um, a lot of the OpenStack team will. Uh, Kevin uh, from our big data team will be there as well. Uh, you met Kevin at scale, so I think you know him already. Yeah. He's a local Texan. I don't think oh, Kevin was at scale. What's that? I don't think Kevin was at scale. He was at scale. 
I was with him. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of the open stack team will be there. Not necessarily everyone from this call, however. Yes. Uh, and we have one final bit of business is picking the date for the next one of these. I've gone ahead and looked at the calendar. Um, what do people think about May 20th? It's a Friday. Kind of gives everyone some time because people are heading off to sprints and ODS and stuff. So, um, uh, our, about the okay. 27th instead? Or the 13th? Thirteenth is right around the corner, so let's just go twenty seventh. The thirteenth is three weeks away. Or we could do three weeks. I mean, that's that's fine too. Thirteenth it is. So I will go ahead and send that out to the list, as well as a link to this video and whatnot. So thanks everyone for hanging out. Thanks for all the questions today. I think today we've quick had the most amount of questions. Quick last thing: if you're going to be at OpenStack Summit. Um, visit the Ubuntu booth. Uh, that is going to be booth A20, uh, and you'll have the chance to win an orange box, the one bright uh, orange box that we have at demos and stuff. So, yep, go drop by the Ubuntu booth. What, really? An orange Wait, box? did you really? say you could win an orange box? No. I'm not going to ODS. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm... No. I'm I'm gonna be gone. I'm gonna be there, man. Do I, can we, I? Am I just? We are not giving that box away. George needs that box for work. <laughs> go. If you go to your ODS, you can uh, you can you have the chance to win an orange box. It's the V4 uh, orange box. Oh, it's an older uh, one. Oh no, it's yeah. the newer one. It's the new one. The blade one. Jose, We're giving one of those away. Jose, how can you, you announce this? How did you know this? That is on the page I linked. How did no one tell me this? Yeah, oh, I don't know. How is it that we can't get one of these things to test our bundles on and Jose's just giving them away? <laughs> it's not me. It's just not. I mean, if I had one, uh, I, would be, I wouldn't be requesting the boxes from you. Yeah. <laughs> For those who Bruiser, don't want an Bruiser can't boxes. test Kubernetes because he doesn't have a KVM provider, oh, yeah. but Jose's like, I'm giving away blades. For those who don't know what orange boxes are, they're, they're a small uh, rack of, of uh, Intel NUCs. So there's 11 Intel NUCs inside one box, so it's basically it's a cloud in a box, and it's incredibly awesome. So if you're going to go to ODS, check out the Ubuntu booth and try to win this, and I'll buy it from you. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> If you don't get to go to UD, to ODS and see the box, the actual box in there, uh, it, we're probably going to be at some other conferences, so you can check out the box and we can give you some demos on it as well. If yes. you win the box, email me. I will offer some money, real cash, for that box. Let's go there and, and find Kevin and be like, I want to see this Hadoop stack you guys keep talking about on the orange <laughs> box. It takes about 10 minutes, depending on conference wire, wireless, something like that. It's pretty awesome. Yes. I can't believe they're giving away a box. Unbelievable. I don't even get one. <laughs> well, and I think that's it for the office hours this uh, All this right. Week. See you on the 13th. Uh, watch for my post on the mailing list. Goodbye, everyone.